Bill Doobie here. Today we're restoring the wrist rest on my Microsoft Ergonomic 4000 keyboard. Wish me luck. This is my first time doing this. Oh, and stay tuned. Here's the keyboard. I took off the wrist uh, bottom support. This is just really easy to take off. Oh, we are going to take these guys off. First, we have to remove all these screws right here, 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 all along through here. The rest of these screws can be left alone. Let's get started. I'm making templates because this is not my first ergonomic keyboard. I've actually gone through quite a few of these and have quite a few wrist rests that need to be refurbished. Synthetic leather that we purchased, it was marketed as real leather, but I actually would prefer to have synthetic because the clearance on this is not very much. There's another screw. I'm putting all the screws in this little thing right here. We have all the screws out. Flip the keyboard over. Now there's two Oh, I don't know, posts that are pretty prevalent right there. There's one, one out. And two out. This is what the keyboard looks like without the rest rest. Not very comfortable typing that way. There is real damage here. What we are going to do is take this off carefully and also get uh, two templates made for this, what we're going to be cutting. See the foam? I'm going to be reusing the foam for this, this go round. But I had to go get this tool which is a plastic razor used for scraping off stickers. Now time to take this guy off. I want to get this faux leather off without damaging it. That way I can have a nice template to go off of. Be nice if there was more contrast. I imagine you probably can't see this very well. I will do my best to come back in. Whoa, one of my posts broke, that's not good. Have all sorts of new things happen with old pieces of gear. I'll have to glue this one back in, which should be a lot of fun. We're just peeling it off. Once we get it going, it's not too hard to get peeled off. Microsoft actually has a part number on this. I wonder if I could order up these without having to refurbish them. I doubt it. <laughs> Probably would cost me more than a new keyboard altogether. That's where automakers make the, their money. is not so much on the cars, but it's on the replacement parts. Why they always want you to use OEM. Uh, we'll put that in there too. And we'll glue that tonight back on. Take this off as carefully as we can. This is almost like removing a label too. If it doesn't come off the plastic, I'm not going to make a template. I'm just going to leave it there and use it until I can't. <laughs> I 
memory foam intact. Really didn't mind the fact that it's only 0.4 milliliters uh, thick is the clearance between this and my keyboard is like next to nothing. There's that. We'll make a template out of this. This one we'll just leave alone and we'll repair this. Let's get some magic repair stuff. Repair this part right here. This looks like it, you know, it just gave way with time, I guess. A new super glue gel. Yay. We'll see how well this works. There's the gel. Now put it on my fingers and stick them together. Not really. We'll hold that for a minute. It actually has a little tab to it too, which makes it a little easier to line up. You have to be prepared for anything in, in, um, when you're working. <laughs> this, I figured the best way to make the template will be to take this side, glue it face down because when you put it on the template, you want it like this when you're using it as a template. So I'm going to glue it face down. You can't get any more exact than to use the exact piece of cloth. And then I'll just use that as a template. There's a little bit of stickum all the way around this. So I feel like, oh, maybe I got super glue on me. Not one of the most pleasant ideas in the world. That's been about a minute. We'll pray that's at the right angle. Find that out when we go to put it back in. It looks about right. All the other ones are angled about that way. Put that over to the side. Face down would make it so that when you cut it on the back of this, that it's correct because then it's going to go that way. We're going to get some help from Ben Franklin on this one. The Art of Virtue. Now we have it pressed down. And we'll move that up over here, out of the way. And we will do the next one. Let's hope that goes easier. Oh, Ben, I'm sorry I got some glue on you too. Use what we, what we can with our fingers. I mean, this keyboard's probably well over 10 years old. Everything in my house is over 10 years old, including me. We've gone all the way around. Time to peel away from the foam. Hopefully we can do that and keep the foam intact. And it's one of those tools that you just think of new uses for it almost every day. I actually used it to remove the registration sticker from my car this year on the license plate. Had I been using this all along, there would have been no damage whatsoever to my license plate. When you go in with a metal razor, you mangle the license plate, which is underneath my sticker. There's pretty much bare metal on my license plate. Because it's not good to stack your stickers. I found that out the hard way. Oh, when was that? That was probably 1996 or seven. I get pulled over by a policeman. You don't have any registration on your car. What do you mean I don't have any registration? Well, there's no sticker. Somebody had stolen my sticker and put it on their car. I got a fix it ticket. And 
and it cost me, I think, $23 to get a new sticker because the DMV will hit you for a new sticker because they don't give those away for free. We're almost done. Oh, this one came off real clean. We're almost done working for tonight. We repaired a post. We're making the, the um, things for this. This one is pretty much ready to go. No post damage. Use this spot right here and we will do the glue again. Making the template for this part. Tomorrow, the cutting of the patterns and then re-upholstering my wrist rests. Yay! It's going to be fun and exciting. This is our big piece. Let's do the other one too. Very happy that this is not wet. This morning it was visibly still curing. Done. Don't even have to really draw here. We're going to do the rough cut first. Now time for the fine cut. Done. Now, to cut the leather, the gluing worked well. Basically going to be doing the same thing except with the uh, leather this time. First we line this up and we try to use as much of the leather as we can, which will be like that. The 4000 keyboard is my favorite. I intend to keep mine until the keys fall off. We're going to go in and do a rough cut and then go back in and do a fine cut. Only have one shot. This is my only piece of leather. There's the rough cut. Preliminary check. There's one. It's going to go on like that. And come around. And come off and come over. You can be an interesting fit. Fun times. Let's do the smaller one first. Double check. Make sure that there's plenty of room. Start there. Work our way over to there. Take this off. Looks kind of like what we just had, huh? And it's very sticky. Okay. Position. Wish me luck. Roll it down to here. Roll everything up on. This little tug. So far, so good. It's 
been a learning experience. There's one done. Where are we going to start on this one? Probably up on this corner here, work our way around. Now that we know a little bit more about how this stuff goes on. Very sticky once you start. <laughs> wow. It's the right way. Looks right. Because if I go like this, this isn't right. <laughs> this is the right way. Match up the corner. Match up the corner. work our way around. Yeah, it went on smooth. So smooth I didn't even notice that I was putting an air gap in there. I want it tight to the keyboard. Starting to look like a new keyboard pad, huh? Next time I do this, I'm going to put new foam in too. It just won't be on camera unless you guys want it. Let's take a look. fit down in. Wow, I don't even have to go back and trim. I do here, I have to tuck that in better. Why not? This needs to be tacked down a little better. Sneak it in. And same here. Surgical. There they are. Take out these little guys. Maybe that's how they did they did it in the Oh yeah, do it right over your keyboard. Not too smart. I've never been accused of being too smart. Same thing with this one. We'll take out just a smidge here. So that we have everything down. All right, let's get it in before the stroke of midnight. Because that's when this keyboard turns back into a pumpkin. Put the screws back in right now. Looks great, doesn't it? That's a lot better than the old one was. How's the feel on that side? Not bad. Now we know to trim this part off. Trim this off, not worry about the overlap. Overlap, meaning overlap of that ridge there. I was really worried about that in the beginning. Everything's in. This definitely has been an interesting project. I should have taken before picture because after picture is not going to be as believable. Oh well. Yeah.
This part needs to be trimmed just a little bit. Not much, just pulled in, probably. Can we get you down? Screw this back on, call it done. I think you could probably do this maybe four or five times during the career of your keyboard. All the screws are in. Ta da! Isn't that great? Look at that. Got it all nice. I'll put links down below to the leather that I use. For a little bit more than 11 bucks, I have basically a newly refurbished keyboard wrist rests. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section down below. I answer them all. Love you all. Bye-bye.